The 2nd Squadron, 17th Cavalry Regiment, has a rich history that can be traced to the early years of World War I. On July 1, 1940, the 17th Cavalry Regiment was redesignated. Bravo Troop 217 was the predecessor of the move to the Combat Arms Regimental System in 1957. On February 19, 1964, Major General Kritz, commander of the 101st Airborne Division, presented Lieutenant Colonel Kins with the squadron colors, making him the first commander of 2nd Squadron, 17th Cavalry Regiment. On July 7, 1965, Alpha Troop from 217 deployed to Vietnam with 1st Brigade. Alpha would spend the next 31 months separated from the remainder of the squadron. During the time they were in Vietnam, they would see some of the hardest fighting in the Vietnam campaign. In the late fall of 1967, the remainder of the squadron would deploy to Vietnam to join Alpha Troop. On the 7th of February, 1972, the squadron returned home after six years of active combat. Listen to the words of Army Major Retired Lou Jennings as he recounts the history of 217 during Vietnam. I joined Alpha Troop at uh, Camp Evans in Vietnam in March of 1969. The squadron had uh, arrived and was forming up from Fort Campbell, and I was infused from 7th Squadron of the 1st Cavalry Regiment down south to come up north and join the squadron, uh, which was both at Camp Evans and at uh, Camp Eagle at the time. I wrote a book about my combat experiences with Alpha 2nd and the 17th, supporting the 101st Airborne Division. My memoir is called 19 Minutes to Live, Helicopter Combat in Vietnam. As you may know, the war in Vietnam was escalating in the late 60s with nearly 500,000 boots on the ground. It became known as the Helicopter War as nearly 12,000 helicopters were employed there by all the services in the CIA. For those of us in Air Cavalry, we flew scouts, guns, and Hueys in our lift platoon. Here I am with uh, Mike Talton, that's the ugly guy on the left with the Thompson submachine gun on his hip. A great guy to have in a fight. That's me on the right with the rocket across my shoulders. My wife always laughs at this photo. She says, you had abs. What happened? <laughs> well, we get a little old and rotund in the middle. Mr. Glenn Stewart asked me to comment on my love for the 2nd and the 17th, and that was easy to answer. It's the people I served with that always performed at the top of their game and had your back, no matter how th bad things may get. And proud to be an alumni of the 2nd Squadron 17th Cavalry Regiment, as Lieutenant General Hal Moore wrote, we were soldiers once, and young. As Glenn reminded me, I've donned my cav hat, and just a slow hand salute to honor you for your service to the country, to the regiment, to the division, and especially to one another. And thank you for upholding the cavalry traditions. And remember, if you ain't cav, you ain't. So long. In September of 1990, the squadron deployed in support of Operation Desert Shield as a deterrent force until the initiation of Operation Desert Storm in January of 1991. On 25 February 1991, after three days of reconnaissance missions across the Iraqi border, the squadron screened the division's front on its historic air assault deep into Iraqi territory. In February of 2003, the squadron deployed in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. The squadron led the division's aviation forces across the border securing the division's initial objectives. The squadron became the aviation force of choice for the division commander for the urban fight. In November of 2005, the squadron moved to FOB Warrior and assumed control of a platoon of UH-60s in support of 1st Brigade Task Force Band of Brothers. The squadron also supported Task Force Freedom in Mosul, as well as the 159th Combat Aviation Brigade as part of an AH-64 battalion task force. In March of 2006, the squadron redeployed to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. In December of 2007, the squadron deployed as a multifunctional aviation task force in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. The task force continued to influence the surrounding region, enabling ground commanders the freedom of maneuver in the unforgiving terrain of eastern Afghanistan. The 2nd Squadron, 17th Cavalry Regiment, was named the Top Army Aviation Battalion during a ceremony on January 29th at Fort Rucker, Alabama. 
In March of 2010, the squadron deployed as Task Force Sabre in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. Task Force Sabre provided reconnaissance, attack, and pathfinder elements poised to conduct full-spectrum operations across southern Afghanistan. In August of 2012, the squadron deployed yet again to Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. In March of 2013, the squadron redeployed its soldiers and OH-58 Kiowa Warrior Helicopters as the majority of the Kiowa's mission ended across much of the regional command east. On March 31, 2015, the squadron marked the end of service for the OH-58 Kiowa Warrior. The squadron flew the OH-58 since 1983. Retiring the aircraft paved the way for the squadron's transition to the AH-64 Delta. The squadron's use of the AH-64 Delta would be short-lived, however, as it was replaced with the upgraded Echo model in 2015. In August of 2017, the squadron deployed to Kuwait, Iraq, and Syria in support of Operation Spartan Shield and Inherent Resolve. During the deployment, the squadron assisted multiple missions against ISIS, participated in operations, and controlled the ISIS capital, aiding in the final liberation of all Iraqi territory. In June of 2020, 2nd Squadron, 17th Cavalry Regiment, deployed to South Korea in support of our Pacific allies. During the indo pacom rotation, the squadron flew multiple missions to increase combat readiness. Throughout the deployment, the squadron navigated the COVID-19 pandemic, conducted a spur ride, and integrated with the Republic of Korean Army and Air Force. My name is Johannes Van Bruggen. When I was in the Army and in the CAV, the 2nd to 17th is one of many CAV units that I've been in. We were the best unit that any of them had seen in their whole time working with DES. And they asked the standardization officer if he would go and work with them in DES, get transferred. He declined because he said there were two gun pilots left in the Army that still liked them and he didn't want to alienate them. So if you're in the second 17th, you're in the best there is. There isn't any better. Hello, Cap Troopers. My name is Colonel Retired John Thompson, and I had the honor and privilege to command Bravo Troop, the Banshees, from 1992 to 1994. I'd like to give a shout out to you and your beautiful families as you come together for an evening of celebration and camaraderie. The cab looked quite different during my time, but the things that haven't changed are the mission and the warrior spirit that exists in the cab. So thank you for what you do. Take care of each other. God bless, out front. Hey, out front. Hey, this is uh, Sergeant Major Jenkins here, former Sabre 7, coming to you from Soto Cano Air Base, Honduras. Hey, I wanted to take this time and this opportunity to thank you guys for being part of the Brotherhood of 217 Cav. Out front, I thank you for the opportunity to be a part of that brotherhood. And I thank you that I can be a part of that brotherhood. So with that, I want to charge my glass and I want to say a toast. If you ain't Cav, you ain't shit. Out front. You know, back when I was in the Army, it took a whole team of good maintainers to keep these things going. Kind of like the team we had at 217K. Cheers, boys. Hey, uh, I am Sergeant Lellis uh, with Delta Troop Production Control. Uh, it's such an honor to be on the unit. So, since the first day that I got here in 217, uh, you, you know it is work but 217 doesn't make you feel that's just work. So at the end of the day, you know this is a, it's a huge family. It is an extension of your family here. And you know you can count with like somebody if you need help, you know that they're gonna be there for you. Hey, CW3 Joe Lockridge, Production Control OSE here at 217. I love it here. Uh, the guys keep me fired up. The guys and gals keep me fired up every day. Uh, there's always something new going on 
Uh, it does. It just does really feel like an extension of my own personal family here. The culture is unlike anything that I've ever seen. I mean, everybody uh, comes together at all times. I mean, we we say it all the time, right? It's it's a squadron effort. Um, pretty much in everything we do, it's, there's no Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta Troop. You know, if we work it one unit and we get the job done. Hey there, my name is. Uh... W01 Jake Bustos. I'm the squadron maintenance tech here for 217. I think the biggest thing about cavalry history, I feel, is you know, fillers green, right? And we talk about uh, the the way the cavalry trooper goes. They they fight and they fight and they fight, and the end goal is to make it, is is fiddlers green and just that spirit and that being out front and always being the tip of the spear and leaning forward and going into battle. I remember uh, when I did my first um, Stetson breaking, uh, and all those stuff that they, they put it in, and they they have a meaning. And when they put the, the red drink on it, and reminding all the like people that die before us, it is a, such an honor and a lot of responsibility to continue what they did for us. So cavalry history. Uh just makes the unit feel like something bigger than just a group of people. Uh, ties me back to a lot of the, the awesome soldiers that came before me um, and kind of makes me excited to do a lot of these things like the spur ride and the ball uh, that just mean a little bit more when you're part of the calf. It's really special to have individuals uh, who have given so much, some who've even given their lives as part of our history. I mean three Medal of Honor recipients uh, from across the squadron uh, have showed me that no matter what your job is, and no matter when you're doing that job, uh, you may be called on to, to make the ultimate sacrifice or just to go above and beyond uh, for your fellow soldier. And I like to, to kind of think about that every day uh, and remind me to work harder and, and prepare myself to, to do those hard choices if I have to. Uh, cavalry history to me means uh, reinforces brotherhood, you know? Uh, cohesion, camaraderie, like all of that and tradition just kind of follows through the truth. truth. So for me, uh, I did a spur ride back in Korea, right? And uh, cavalry, like, the Brotherhood didn't really fall onto me, right? I was just doing it because I wanted to knock out something. But then I got my pair of spurs from my old NCO, Sergeant Carpio. And he had received his spurs from another spur holder before him. So being a part of that tradition was really cool. And once I sponsor somebody's getting their spurs, I'm going to hand it down to them. Yeah, so Cav history, uh, to me, uh, really just means carrying on uh, the tradition of the cavalrymen in, in the way we fight. Uh, it's just, it's just to me, it's just how we continue on the tradition of uh, the, get the job done however we can. Because we embrace a culture that other soldiers don't get to uh, experience. It brings everybody together as a, as a family. It brings a commonality with the cavalry. It gives them something that other soldiers won't, won't get to experience. I mean, you're walking in the footsteps of some of the, the most, I mean, brave and courageous individuals that have served in the Army. Um, Medal of Honor winners and people who have had such great impacts on military history and the United States history as we know it. And getting to be a part of that just means something to me intrinsically. Learning about the Medal of Honor recipients gives you someone to admire and to want to strive to be like. It gives you an example of what true honor and selfless service looks like and what to strive for in the military service. I think it makes me feel super proud because you know a lot of people probably had it more difficult than we've had and with all the technology and stuff that we have now being Calvary is changed a little bit but the thing that hasn't is the core values that they've held together. With Cav history uh, the spur ride is probably like the greatest um, experience that I've had learning about the calf history, the 36 hour spur ride, We've, we learned all about the unit history and uh, what it means to be a cavalryman. My name is Sergeant Williams, um, clerk here at uh, 217 Echo Troop. Day to day we do uh, dispatches, we do uh, pickups for the trucks outside, uh, that's pretty much it. The spur ride, that was my most memorable experience. It was fun, it was really fun actually. It was challenging but it was fun. The most memorable experience has to have been the spur ride. You know, it was, I wasn't really sure what I was getting myself into when I started it, but the, the camaraderie and just building the team together and 
everyone pushing each other through our comfort zones, pushing our limits. Um, it was so rewarding at the end when we got to don our spurs for the first time. Since the inception of the squadron, the nation has called on 2nd Squadron, 17th Cavalry Regiment to fight at a moment's notice, neutralize the enemy threat, and allow for the foreign movement of ground troops. Cavalry troopers never quit and never give up. 2nd Squadron, 17th Cavalry Regiment stands ready to deploy and win any conflict given our way. Air Assault, on the wings of destiny, out front. Good evening and Happy New Year to the great 217 Cav out front. You should all be proud because you serve in a squadron with one of the most distinguished combat records in the 101st Airborne Division. I want to thank all the soldiers, non-commissioned officers, warrant officers, officers, civilians and families for what you do every day. It's been a few years since my time as Saber 6 and I've worn many different hats since then. But this one is still one of my favorites. My Stetson's got a little worn, like me, but here's what we looked like 24 years ago. One thing I want to do when I visit the division for the 80th anniversary is leave you my squadron colors, given to me by the great non-commissioned officers and soldiers of the squadron. Your squadron has been a ground force, has flown UH-1s, AH-1s, OH-58s, UH-60s, and now AH-64s. Remember, the CAV is an attitude, not a platform, and that the Army and the American people expect you to win when you deploy, because winning matters. Have a great night, and I'm so proud to serve with each and every one of you.